I'm so glad you joined me today. Got some great things to share with you. And here's the question for today, dear Pastor Bob. It often seems that many times when we give advice to someone, we pull out specific Bible verses that we think relates to them. When we do this, we don't always take the time to understand where someone is coming from. Instead, we just whip out our Bible verses at them like someone pulling out a gun from a holster. Or we fire off a round of Bible verses after another, verse after verse. This approach often pushes a lot of people away. Do you have any thoughts on this? Should we use the scripture Rolodex system when giving Bible advice? Did Jesus do that? Well, he did at times when it was appropriate. And this is really a great question. I love this. And uh, I'll try my best to answer it as best I can. Can I say that scripture, first of all, is not, um, it's not a, a deadly weapon. Just willy-nilly stabbing people with it. Although the Bible says it's the sword. The word is the sword. and uh, But it's the only thing we fight with. But it's not a weapon for mass destruction. It's a weapon for mass correction. And that's the difference. And so it's important that we understand what correction is all about. Now, the most important thing that you and I can ever do is to take the word of God and to say, this is, the, this is where I stand and my foundations are here and this is where it all begins. I have a great mug here, one of our older ones as it says, my foundations are built on the promises of God. It's good, isn't it? But that's where my foundations are at. They're on the promises of God. I need to know the promises to build the foundation. And folks, we need to actively use the promises of God in our lives. You know, there's an old hymn that's called Standing on the Promises of God. I love that hymn. And I remember our old preacher from growing up used to say that it's our job to stand on the promises and not just sit in the premises. <laughs> so standing on the promises of God. In other words, living your life in front of people, allowing people to see scripture actively working in your life. And you know, you are the only Bible that many people will ever see. That's important. And so when your, your foundations are the Bible and when the scripture is your modus operandi, then something exciting begins to happen. You live the word of God. The promises are there and you simply begin to live that way. Now, it can get a little impersonal if you're just using the Bible and quoting it and haphazardly just kind of stabbing people with it. But to use it, and you're still using it as the sword of the Spirit, but to use it as a foundation for the way you love, the way you approach people, the way you talk to them, the way you answer them, the way you give them advice, all of that it doesn't have to necessarily be word for word from the scripture. It really needs to come from your life. Because again, you are the only scripture that a whole lot of people will ever see. Speaking of that, let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Great scripture here. And he says, but in your hearts, set Christ apart as holy, acknowledging him, giving him first place in your lives as Lord. Always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope and confident assurance elicited by your faith that is within you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. 
So it doesn't say just kind of stab them with the word. It says, be ready to give people an answer for your hope, that that they see inside of you, that that they see in your life that speaks more loudly than anything. And do it in a personal way. Do it in a way that they can understand. And there's probably a, 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 a time when you may just bring out a Bible and quote a few scriptures, but many times not at the very beginning. Sometimes your life just needs to reflect the word of God. There you go. Folks, don't forget, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.